Hey guys, it's Mountain Walk, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about some pre-modern. Got uh, another large-ish, or fairly large, larger, on the larger side, uh, pre-modern tournament. And uh, this one's got some interesting cards, so I was like, oh, let's talk about this stuff. A lot of the decks had some unique choices, uh, and I thought, well, this would be, be kind of interesting. Let's talk about this. So, yeah. I think that'd be nice. So let's get into it. All right. So uh, first off, we got basically a pretty stock standard uh, uh, Terrageddon deck. So tax rack, Armageddon effects. Um, so MLD plus some big boys, big green boys, where bear, terror, mongoose, all that good stuff. And and a couple cards I thought were, um, I, I can't remember if these were typical um i'm pretty sure i've seen them in some lists maybe not all uh, a lot of the lists are pretty pretty close pretty much play the the, the same sort of um uh, stock like 70 out of 75 but uh first up worship worship is is a good card this is very good with our good friend nimble mongoose mongoose himself is very hard to stop so uh th this prevents you i mean this is pretty much a hard lock against some decks or at least a hard soft lock? A soft hard lock. Well, uh, Worship plus Nimble Mongoose is very, very good. Um, very hard to win against this, this combo without removing the Mongoose or all the creatures or the Worship. Um, difficult to deal with, but very sweet, very powerful. Uh, definitely a good one of to play on the board. And of course, everyone's favorite, Abolish. Uh, Abolish is obviously a great card, I think slightly underplayed. It's very, very good in um, tax rack decks uh, because, well, it's a it's a free disenchant, basically. And that can be big money. That could be big money. So if you need to, like, say, um, against like certain combo decks, you can chant um, even with Kicker in their upkeep and then also, um, you know, plow a thing and then also uh, abolish if you need to. Uh, very cool, very sweet. Uh, definitely awesome, you know, because uh, the, the planes are you're gonna have planes all up your butt. You're gonna have a buttload of planes, a planes butt, a butt planes. Anyways, this deck again, another very good deck. I like it quite a bit. Um, it can do all sorts of good stuff. Attack decks from a lot of angles. Um, I mean, really, what what more what more do you need to say? Uh, also, I feel like you could always do something else with the splash. Obviously. Um, Pyroclasm is very powerful. Being able to to Clasm is very good, very useful against a lot of the aggressive decks. Uh, but you could always play something else, you know, maybe something like um, hmm, uh, Arcane Laboratory, something like that. Who knows? That, that that's probably worth uh, looking into. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to the next deck. All right, so we got a pretty much a standard rock list. Nothing too weird here, mostly, mostly. Um, it looks like he's on the he's on the Chainer's Edict and, and Smother Train. Um, typically, yeah, you'll see like a 2-2 two -two split of like Smother and Diabolic or Chainer's Edict. Obviously, Chainer's Edict gives you a lot more value, uh, say, later on, which is pretty good. Uh, Diabolic Edict is slightly better in some other situations, like against Verdant Force, things like that. But... Um, some interesting stuff. A Phyrexian Arena. This card is very good. Normally, this this slot that Arena is taking up is occupied by something like Recurring Nightmare. Recurring Nightmare, very powerful card, very good. But it does require, um, and now it's not a given that you'll have creatures to loop with Recurring Nightmare. Um, so it does require that. Uh, but uh, for example, Arena has much less constraints, uh, far fewer constraints, uh, to to actually be active. So that's great. Um, big fan of big fan of Arena. So that's interesting. Um, haven't seen a lot of people make use of Phyrexian Arena in uh, the Rock archetypes, but definitely pretty good. Uh, it's not uh, like 100% better than rec um, uh, uh, Recurring Nightmare because obviously Arena is more vulnerable to uh, your own pernicious deed effects as well as like your opponent's disenchant effects, but. Uh, still pretty pretty sweet card definitely interesting good card to, to test out at some point 
Um, and then we have all sorts of lip English targets, including uh, Phyrexian Plague Lord in the sideboard, and then also one in the main deck. This card is sweet. This card is uh, definitely, it's a really good one-up, because in a pinch, um, you can kill bigger creatures if, if you really have to. You can block and then tap and sack and kill a, a big thing, so you can do that. Uh, you can also um, just kill off tons of little creatures, which is really nice. So against... Um, say like if you have like a wall of blossoms and a birds of paradise against like someone playing sly and they have like you know a jackal pup and then they play a, um like a ball lightning i mean they can't even play the ball lightning because i mean you could just like super kill it super easily uh and, and so you create these really bad situations where it's like if they have to spend if you block say their uh, jackal pup or mog fanatic with your um with your uh, uh, wall of blossoms or wall of roots or something, then they have to burn it, but then you can sack it to kill another thing. Um, this is very, very cool, very powerful. I think I kind of like it as a one of. Definitely adds another little, um, not a nice little, uh, uh, nice little effect. Being able to just machine gun down little dudes is pretty great. That's a pretty cool effect, and of course you can still attack with it, so you don't even have to keep it untapped. Very cool. I like it a lot. Pretty interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's good stuff. Uh, definitely a nice nice deck. Although <laughs> not playing four treetop village is a little silly. Although I do like the Vorlash stronghold. That's always very good. Um, but yeah yeah. So let's go ahead and go on to the next deck. All right. Now we got some cool stuff here. Now we have uh, a, a more mid rangey, almost controly version of uh dead guy ale so this dead guy ale is typically like a more mid-range deck it's a bit lower to the ground but this deck has main deck decree of justice and skeletal scrying of course decree of justice everyone knows what that is um big powerful card sees play and of course our good friend uh landstill landstill decks play a lot of decree uh so it's it's good here i guess you know late game you can uh, get a bunch of extra tokens um but skeletal scrying specifically uh, if you have, say, for example, like a Exalted Angel, that's pretty good. Draws you a bunch of, uh, gives you a bunch of extra life, and, and takes the edge off the Skeletal Scrying itself. Um, skeletal Scrying is likely makes you more likely, of course, to draw into Exalted Angels. So that's kind of nice. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a good way to utilize your graveyard um, without being over reliant on it. Um, definitely a little underplayed, probably a little bit. Um, definitely a good card. I'm not a huge fan of four. I mean. I don't know if four is correct, um, but it is a very powerful card. It is a very powerful card, and it is an instant of all things. So pretty good. I mean, this is this is definitely something worth playing. I mean, this is not a card that's like been untested before. Um, and around this time, or I should say, onslaught, um, Mirrodin, um, Kamigawa, a uh, vintage. Uh, there was uh, multicolor control decks that ended up playing Skeletal Scrying and Exalted Angel, of course. Um, Exalted Angel was just so good. Um, it's just so good. It just, I mean, it's just so good at like just stomping on random stuff. Um, whereas something like Morphling had a lot of problems. Uh, very, very expensive, very mana intensive. But anyways, so that's that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And another another kind of wonky one. Uh, we got our good friend Knight of Stronghold. See, now typically these decks would play something like um, Nantuko Shades. Nantuko Shades far more faster and efficient than our good friend Knight of Stronghold. Um, but Knight of Stronghold has some really important decks, and that would be Protection from White. So this is very good against, well, Swords to Plowshares, and I guess White Weenie decks and stuff like that too. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty big game. So it definitely gives you a nice edge against... Uh, like stuff like land still, you know, you can um, definitely uh, like force a force a wrath out of them with just the Knight of Stronghold because it's not like they can really try and hold it off with uh, mainlands. Certainly not for very long. So um, this this is this is uh, pretty sweet. So I think Knight of Stronghold maybe a little bit better suited for this kind of deck than something like Nantuko Shade. And this card is so cool. Look how cool this is. I love old Ice Age stuff. I love, I love, it's just a, it's a nice, good weenie card, you know? Pro white, pump front side, uh, black for first strike. Man, that's great stuff. Really great stuff. I love it. What a great deck. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a, a little bit slower, more on the control slide, 
control side of uh, Dead Guy Ale. Very cool, very sweet. So this is pretty interesting. Um, I think I think maybe I don't know. Maybe 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 it's perfect. Maybe it's perfect. But I like it. I like it. I like the swamps. I like the wastelands, plains, caves, tainted field. Good stuff. Good stuff. Do I? Yeah, I guess I. I guess I do like the four planes, but I feel like I'd want to play maybe, maybe like an undiscovered paradise instead of a planes or something. Um, maybe gemstone mine. I feel like four planes is too many where you'll draw hands where it's like, well, shoot. Um, so I think playing something like gemstone mine, undiscovered paradise, and like two planes, so two five color lands, or at, you know maybe maybe again city of brass would be the best. Uh, or a split, split of all of them, who knows, who knows. But uh, definitely very sweet deck, very cool, very neat, very awesome. All right, so let's let's go ahead and go on to the next one. All right, now we got our good friend, Astral Slide. This is a pretty much a typical uh, uh, slide deck. Um, nothing too weird here, some people play four slide four rift this deck plays only three astral slide um because some sometimes multiple slides can be kind of like blank i guess um whereas obviously multiple lightning rifts just just makes you deal more damage and lets you advance the board a little bit better um especially if you want to make room for like swords and stuff like that and other spells so i guess that that makes sense um but the only uh unique stuff here we got a couple unique additions so first off, we got Temple of the False God. Now, I really, really hate this card in EDH. Really, really, really a lot dislike it. Like, it's really bad there. Uh, but actually, I think it's actually pretty good here. So we are already um, hitting all of our, our land drops with 24 lands, right? Uh, we're, we're pretty much always going to be hitting the land drop every turn, especially with all these cycling cards and stuff. Um, so 24 lands is this is great uh but so so the the temple of the false gods are eating into probably spell slots i would say and uh this is this is good so you're already hitting your land drops so by the time you're playing um temple of the false god is like your fifth land it's pretty much always going to be online and your deck is very mana hungry so stuff like obviously decree of justice or burning wish into a spell or whatever or Getting back Eternal Dragon or Hardcasting Exalted Angel on turn five. I mean, this is pretty powerful. This is pretty good. So I actually kind of like Temple of the False God in this deck. I believe it was actually played in the standard version. Oh, excuse me. I was. <laughs> I believe it was uh, played in the standard version of the deck, um, the red white uh, version. You know, not not the green white version later on. So this is like the block deck, basically. Um, and I, yeah, I think it was played there, and it was pretty good there. I, I think I, I, I remember. Um, so yeah, definitely pretty sweet, pretty cool. I, I like the Temple of False God. And uh, what are we going to do with all that mana? We're going to sneak it into a big old earthquake. This is pretty cool. I like this. This is a good way to clear the board of some big boys. Good way to uh, finish off the game, you know? Uh, this is this is uh just just does a lot of a lot of good stuff i think this is pretty interesting um i haven't tested it but i think it'd be cool i mean you got all that man you might as well use it for an earthquake uh who doesn't like earthquake very cool very sweet i like this a lot um definitely definitely pretty neat all right now we got just a pretty typical pox list um only a couple wonky cards uh Maybe Shelter Valley isn't wonky. This is something that's definitely, I think I've seen a lot of um, decks as a one of. Uh, it's very, it's pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Um, just a good way to just gain an extra life. Uh, and uh, it, especially if you're only playing one, it's not a big deal having an extra color source. Um, definitely, definitely pretty cool, pretty neat. Get a little bit more value out of your lands, which is nice. Uh, and then of course, in the sideboard, we have Soul Feast. This, uh, I assume, is just another way to uh, just try and, and, and beat up on aggro decks or any of the go-wide decks. Uh, yeah, so just make them lose life, you gain life. That's pretty good. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if something like uh, Contagion might be nice too um, to clear the board or something like Spinning Darkness as well for more life gain. 
in addition to the Soul Feast. Um, not 100% sure, but uh, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. Five mana seems like a lot, uh, especially if you're you know you're casting um, casting your your poxes and stuff. So I don't know, but it is interesting. It is interesting. So that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what we have here is our uh, good friend uh, Tinker, good Tinker deck, and uh, don't have super super sneaky tacky stuff, but we do have main deck Sky Diamond, and this is good because just being able to cast your blue spells, namely Tinker, um, whenever you have them instead of having to wait to top deck a blue source or whatever. So I think that's really good. Um, it's just kind of a minor change. You're not playing something like, you know, Mind Stone or some other uh, ramping artifact instead. Um, so I think that's good. I think that's good. Uh, definitely shows that, you know, uh, being able to, to cast probably the most powerful spell in the deck and get whatever you want is really nice. Um, same thing with like main, main deck Metal Worker in here is good because obviously when you get those Metal Worker turns that are very good. But even if Metal Worker is bad, you can tinker them away, which is sweet. Um, I think that's a, a few too many Mastercore, especially with Tinker. I think they could just kind of rot in your hands unless you feel like you really need to win with Mastercore or something. Not 100% sure there. Um, and then, of course, uh, the other really interesting card we have is Icy Manipulator. This card's very sweet. Uh, I think Icy is probably a little bit underplayed in this format. Uh, not only in, like, the prison decks, but um, you know, some of the other board control style decks. I, I think uh, Icy Manipulator can do some good work. I think it's actually still pretty good, and I think it is underplayed. Not like you're jamming four of all the time, 100% of the time, or whatever, but it is pretty powerful. Um, just being able to slow stuff down, it's basically never dead. It can act like another Richard import. Um, it, you know, makes aggro decks or decks with a bunch of creatures. Commit more to the board, thus playing more into sweepers. So it can do a lot of cool stuff. I like it a lot. Um, it's good. It's good. Good sweet card. I like it here, and uh, that's a that's a pretty clever play. So yeah, let's go on to the next one. All right. So we have Howling Mine and Intuition. So these are, I think, typically pretty stock. I think. At least the one intuition should be, just because you're obviously very, very reliant on, on stasis uh, to win, you know, otherwise you, you won't be able to kill them with Black Vice if, uh, you know, they're able to play all their spells and stuff, so that's bad. So the one uh, one of intuition, I think, is pretty good here. Uh, I think that's that's definitely great. Um, and of course the Howling Mine. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure most of these lists play Howling Mine, but this card's very, very good. It lets you just draw tons of stuff. Gives you um, extra, you know, islands to play to tap for stasis. Um, gives you more of your uh, free counter magic, more gushes. So it lets you replay, you know, or return your tap lands to your hand to, to replay them. And then, of course, gets you closer to, to any Forsaken Cities if you haven't drawn one yet. Or just draws you a, another copy of stasis when you... Um, uh, uh, when you're when you're you know just sitting with one out, so in case something happens, something unforeseen happens, uh, you do you do have more access to, to cards, to stasis, all that kind of good stuff. So I think that's pretty sweet. This is a pretty stock stock list for stasis for the most part. So uh, I, I like it. It's very good. Um, so yeah, very sweet. All right. And here, uh, at last, we have uh, number one deck here, which is a, a blue-green splash-white uh, Enchantress deck. So this is the um, combo Enchantress that uses uh, Cloud of Fairies to uh, untap, like, Sarah's Sanctum to reduce a bunch of mana. Um, and you, you bounce the Cloud of Fairies with Words of Wind. So every time you would draw a card, um, like when you trigger your Enchantresses by playing Enchantments, You'll pay one, so instead of drawing, you'll return the Cloud of Fairies, um, and then you can uh, play it, untap your Sarah Sanctum, keep producing a ton of mana, and you can stroke them out. Um, you can, you know, just uh, play a bunch of stuff. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Of course, Frantic Search is good here, too. This does a pretty good job of untapping your Sarah Sanctum just to produce a bunch of mana for a big turn. Um, 
or you can you can do all sorts of sweet stuff. Obviously, just having a ton of mana is very useful. Um, for example, the sideboard mass core. This is a card that likes having a lot of mana, um, so you can machine gun down your opponent's board. Very sweet. Uh, or you can always have a regen shield, I guess. But basically, uh, a mass core on board with your opponent with no board with a bunch of mana is pretty good. It's pretty good against a lot of decks. So that's really cool. I think that's a pretty interesting sideboard card. And of course, another good sideboard card, Parallax Tide. Uh, this card's sweet. It's pretty pretty nice against a lot of the um, uh, control decks. Uh, so you can start removing their lands, which is very, very cool. And uh, makes it easier to resolve um, your, your spells, of course. So uh, definitely kind of like a one-sided Armageddon in some respects. Very nice, very nice. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff in the sideboard. Stuff like Guy's Blessing, just in case you draw too low, need to shuffle your win cons back in or something. Defense Grid, um, Curse Totem, all sorts of nice stuff. A lot of good white sideboard cards. Stuff like Sacred Ground. This is a uh, great against uh, mass land destruction or, or wasteland, you know, on your Sarah Sanctum. Um, Sacred Mesa, of course, is, is a good alternate win condition. Um, lots of great stuff. Sterling Grove against uh, all sorts of targeted pinpoint removal. So lots of cool stuff. I think there's a little bit of a, an error in the deck list registry. So I think that I think that is for Sarah Sanctum, but I think they just inputted it wrong. Um, not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, I like I like the I like the Enchantress decks. I like that this one definitely incorporated some of the more prisony elements in the sideboard. Um, very cool, very sweet. This is definitely a, a, a pretty, pretty awesome, pretty awesome deck. Lots of card drawing, lots of tutoring, produces tons of mana, can play all sorts of different cards, has a lot of redundancy, um, a lot of protection. I mean, really, what more do you want? So that's probably why this deck won. Uh, definitely no one's playing a ton of uh, tranquility effects, and sometimes they just might forget the tranquility is even in their hand. Who knows, right? Who knows? It could happen. Um, but yeah. Oh, actually, I just noticed it says the deck 62 cards. So maybe the Sarah Sanctum, actually, it's just the two Sarah Sanctum, which would make a little bit more sense since obviously they're they're legendary. Oh, well, a anyways, who knows? Who knows? But deck list is pretty sweet regardless. Um, so yeah. So yeah, guys, th thank you for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit, looking at these cool decks and interesting cards and all that good stuff. So uh, thanks for stopping by and have a great day.